Thank you very much, Saki, and good afternoon, everybody. Indeed, a great presentation because in this morning we discussed mainly about losing keys, uh, revoking issues, revoking credentials. But now in this very exciting demo that I have a great excitement to announce, we're talking about people have lost everything. Uh, they are starting a new life. They need to build their own a new life. So how is EPSI helping those refugees coming to Europe to build uh, their new life? So I'm very happy to announce this, uh, this uh, demo, this use case from Italy together with Germany, where they will uh, present their focus on refugees presenting um, and applying towards a European university. So I would like happily invite Francesco to share his screen and to start the demo. I also want to just briefly mention that is also an interesting case because this demo was already in production before they moved on to uh, EPSI. So it is also an excellent uh, showcase how an existing production life system can um, rearrange and reuse uh, the EPSI capabilities. But Francesco, floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Um, here I am. Thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, just uh, uh, no, no more words than uh, than yours. Just to present uh, our team, uh, which is uh, Letizia from uh, Cimea uh, and uh, uh, Roberto from University of Cagliari and Helmut uh, from Govport. Um, we did this project as you, as you were saying. It was a, a, an already in production project. The, our uh, big work has been uh, to integrate it fully with EPSI. So we are very um, keen uh, to, to make it uh, real in EPSI when EPSI will be in production. So I will give the floor to Letizia, who will lead the presentation, and maybe we'll, uh, uh, I will come back uh, again later if needed. Go, Letizia. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, I hope you all eat very well and get ready for this uh, afternoon session. Uh, my name is Letizia Brambilla Pisoni, and as you can see here, before starting and entering into our demo, as already Francesco told you, here is our team. Uh, I work for TIMEA, that is the National Information Center on Academic Mobility and Equivalence, and our, mm, let's say, role in Italy is to support uh, higher education institutions in recognition of foreign qualification. Um, since 2019, we have uh, adopted a blockchain solution for um, issuing our assessments. And within our role, we are also um, part of a project led by Council of Europe that is also uh, today with us, uh, the EQPR um, project that stands for European Qualification qualifications passport for refugees. Why it's so important, this is a, a, a project that uh, it has been developed since 2017, uh, it's still ongoing, and uh, it is uh, related to our use case, so showing uh, a refugee that arrived in Europe with lack of documentation and ask for an assessment. Uh, of uh, his previous academic study path in order to further uh, studies and presumably also get a job in Europe. That's why also we have University of Cagliari here, uh, that is uh, one of official ha Italian higher education institution uh, that is also hosted in 2018 uh, EQPR session. And so they are currently enrolled students who are EQPR older, and then we have GovPart that is, um, is a German company that is looking for a graduate in uh, artificial intelligence. So, um, as you can see from this um, slide, uh, our use case, Euro European Qualifications Passport for Refugee on EPSI, it's quite a long and we can say also joint journey. Um, we have uh, the holder of the credential, that is in our case Ahmed Mutawalla Ahmed, a Syrian refugee. Uh, that arrive in Europe and in order to apply for a master, he needs an assessment of his qualification. Therefore, he um, joined uh, um, EQPR project uh, and Council of Europe is the body entitled of issuing this specific document. So it plays the role of the issuer of this verifiable credential. 
After obtaining this document, um, Ahmed receive it directly in his wallet and he can directly share with um, Cagliari University his verifiable credential. Why so? We are going to show you, but just to give you a quick idea, because also University of Cagliari is onboarded on EPSI, so it's able to directly verify the identity of the issuer and of the verifiable credential. Uh, in doing so, it enrolls Ahmed in a, his academic study path, and after two years, uh, Ahmed obtained an Italian qualification. Um, but again, uh, he wants to um, further his path and he wants to get a job. He finds this interesting application for a job, in, for a job company in Germany, and then he shares uh, the verifiable credential via email with the German company. So uh, again, just to give you a um, in more context, I'm not going to uh, explain that much, but what we would like to say today is that um, thanks to EPSI, um, let's say we, um, how our use case works cross border with refugees too. So we have a mobility of a holder of a credential that from Italy and then Germany can easily and securely share um, uh, his credential obtained. Um, this is a quick presentation about EQPR, but just to give you some numbers. Since 2017, uh, till now, let's say one week ago, um, the Council of Europe already issued 664 EQPR. And uh, uh, just to give you the idea of the um, centre involved so far, um, there are 15 enigmatic centres uh, involved in the project, meaning that uh, already 15 centres in Europe, in European countries, um, know these tools, are aware of the uh, meaning of these uh, tools and are also keen on supporting and providing information on uh, higher education institution or employees. So basically, what is the objective of uh, our scenario? So EQPR on EPSI, showing, first of all, inclusivity of both stakeholders and services. Stakeholders, because as we have already shown, and then in the demo, I think it's going to be very clear, we have different actors, let's say, um, in holder of a credential, uh, two um, issuer, Council of Europe and the university, and two verifiers of the credential, so university and then GovPart but also inclusivity of services because it's not just a matter of a diploma but it's also a verifiable eqpr attestation that is shared and inclusivity means also mobility mobility physical mobility of people all around europe but also of data and the information the holder want to share with uh, um, a third party and then uh, the other two core objectives of this uh, use case is also to show integration and harmonization. Integration in a blockchain infrastructure that is public and European. And uh, let's say EPSI, it's the reason why we join it. I mean, we are committed to um, fully implemented uh, the already existing use case we're going to show in EPSI infrastructure. So to harmonize also um, all the information. So again, here we have a quick peek of the actors and roles involved. As you can see, the center is always the holder of the credential um, that configures the wallet by applying into the um, Council of Europe platform and requests the issuance of its education credential. And then is able directly from his wallet, that is an app we develop, uh, to share it with university or employer. Uh, then we have Council of Europe to play the role of a issuer, in this case, as it entitled to issue the QPR. And then we have the University of Cagliari, that is, uh, um, uh, as I already mentioned, an official um, Italian higher education institution that is able to both verify and then um, later, after two years, issue a final diploma. And then we have a German company, GovPart, that verifies the educational credentials shared by the students. So the um, owner of the whole wallet, the holder, um, decides also with who and in which way can share uh, his credential. So this is basically the scenario that we are going to show you. Uh, as, uh, uh, let's say, the procedure uh, is already ongoing, so the QPR project is something that uh, it's currently uh, working. We are not going to show you, um, let's say, um, this part. I'm just telling it a little bit. But uh, just to make you clear, once uh, 
a, um, um, a person wants to apply for eQPR procedure, he registers into eQPR platform um, that onboards Ahmed on EPSI. And so the wallet is immediately uh, generated. Then in this platform, he finds information on how to apply for the project. And then, um, let's say through uh, the analysis of documentation and the questionnaire, Council of Europe is able to um, uh, issue and substantiate uh, the information provided by the applicant. So now I stop sharing the presentation and I would like to show you exactly what happened. So let me just put it like this. As you can see here, I think you're going to see my screen. I already prepared a request. At this very moment, this is the uh, Ahmed Mutawalla wallet. Uh, EPSI wallet that ask uh, Council of Europe, that is an institution already embodied on EPSI, to issue his uh, eQPR on the wallet. So just by selecting the issuing organization, I can decide also which document I can ask you. So Council of Europe is entitled to issue a um, European qualification passport for refugees. And then I send immediately a request. Okay, I received this message. So basically what happened um, is that um, on the, um, let's say, side of uh, Council of Europe, just wait one moment, they issued the credential. I have pending request. I can check the status of my credential, as you can see. So I ask this information. And once published, once published directly on my wallet, I can see my certificate here. What is interesting is that I can immediately, as a holder of this qualification, verify the issuer. If the issuer, so in this case, Council of Europe, is onboarded on EPSI, and I receive this message. There are also other functionality, like, for example, I can um, open my credential details and download the PDF in this way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just need to... Let's say put it here, sorry. Anyway, I can show you later on. And then um, what happened is that I can also um, send it, uh, share the certificate with any third party. Here I can choose in which way I can share my credential. In our user journey, what happened is that Ahmed finds an interest in surfing the net find that Cagliari University um, can, uh, um, I mean, offer an interesting uh, second cycle degree in artificial intelligence. And he also finds out that Cagliari University is onboarded on EPSI. So with a direct share of his credential, he can pick the validity days, um, so the, the time frame that allowed the university to check his credential, let's pick up 15 days, for example, and then select the organization, in this case, Università degli Studi di Cagliari, University of Cagliari. So just clicking on the share button, I also receive a pop-up uh, that say your certification details have been shared successfully. What happened so far that now I'm just waiting for a positive or negative reply, let's say from Cagliari University, that before deciding to enroll in me into his uh, program has to verify uh, the kind of credential I share with him. So now I would like to give the floor to Professor Roberto Tonelli from the from University of Cagliari that is going to show you how this process uh, uh, works. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm a professor from the University of Cagliari. In this first phase, the University of Cagliari acts uh, as a verifier and checks uh, how many credentials on eQPR. Uh, the University of Cagliari belongs actually uh, uh, to the ecosystem, so has been onboarded on EPSI and uh, directly receives the credential on the platform uh, as sent or requested by Hamed. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so I'm logged in already into the platform and uh, 
here is uh, all the records from Ahmed. So reloading, as uh, you have just seen a few minutes ago, uh, Ahmed applied to the University of Calgary. So I can find the last application and I can check it clicking on it. I can also double check who is the subject, who is the, the, applic the applicant, the certification authority, which is the Council of Europe, the QPR ID number, and so on. And uh, more important, the EFC, the ID of the, of the applicant, and the EFC, the ID of the issuer. Then I can uh, download the verifiable credential data in the form of a JSON file, which I can download on my laptop. After downloading the credential, I can just go here in order to verify that the credentials are uh, really issued by uh, the Council of Europe. I have to upload the JSON. And verify the certificate. And so I can just double check that the issuing organization uh, has a DID on the EPSI blockchain. And I can also double check all the information available uh, through our ecosystem. So, European qualification passport for refugee is the document, uh, document type, and publication date, student name, and also the user EPSI DID. This is the first step so that in this step, the University of Calgary just act uh, as a verifier for uh, the uh, certification tested by AMED and issued by the Council of Europe. At this point, I guess the floor goes back to Letizia. In the second phase, I'll be the issuer. Actually, now that uh, um, Ahmed uh, is, uh, I mean, is a can enter, can enroll uh, into Cagliari University, he is logging into the um, uh, Master of Artificial Intelligence. Two year passes, and of course, he asks Cagliari University to um, issue on his wallet, on his Epsi wallet, uh, the final diploma of his graduation. So Roberto is going to show you how this is happens. I already fill in through the through the app uh, the request. So uh, Roberto is going to find it immediately and show you how it it goes. Okay. Yes, Thank you. I'm going to share again my screen. Okay, now I'm in another part of our ecosystem and uh, I can check that uh, someone has uh, published a request of issuing a high anchor diploma certification. The applicant is Ahmed Mutawala Ahmed. I can open it. Of course, I can double check the data on the uh, requesting person the certification ID, the document group, the date, and the document type. Now I can act as an issuer of a master diploma degree. I have, uh, so Hamed graduated after two years at the University of Cagliari, and uh, I can just fill the form. Here is uh, the data I have to fill in. Okay, here's the master degree in artificial intelligence. Then the name of the awarding institution. The final mark, let's say 105. And uh, the credits obtained by the student. The graduation date, I can just go here and say for the test. And a document number that can be for the certification of authority is already involved on the EFC. And then uh, if I like to, I can also select uh, old fashion PDF certification of the master's degree diploma and upload it into the system. 
So basically, in the second phase, the University of Cagliari acted as, a, as an issuer for the master's degree diploma of Ahmed. I can confirm the issue of the certification. And uh, in this moment, Hamad received uh, the certification in uh, his own wallet and then can uh, uh, use uh, this credential to share it with any other organization. Uh, I think I can give the floor back to the speaker. Yeah, thank you, Roberto. So again, now I'm gonna, let's say, uh, share again my screen. Can you see it? Yes, I think so. So here you can find my final diploma um, on EPSI. Again, I can verify the issue, but uh, Ahmed's journey is not finished yet. So I checking online and I find an interesting job offers, um, let's say offered by government partner, GovPart, a German company that is looking for a mass, for graduated master in artificial intelligence. Here, as you can see, you have an email contact. So Ahmed, want to share um, his credential, in this case, the final diploma uh, via email. Uh, why he can do so? Because, uh, of course, GovPart is not onboarded on EPSI, but he needs to verify who is the issuer and the owner of the credential. So as you can see, the step is very, very simple. I can put the email. Sorry. Okay, and just by clicking share, I receive a message that say that my certification details have been shared successfully. So now Ahmed is waiting for a, a reply while uh, GovPart is checking on the information received. So I pass the floor to Helmut. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I will share my screen. I give you a view to my inbox and you see my diploma uh, certificate from Ahmed Mutawala Ahmed. I get some instruction in order I have to download the JSON file uh, and I can verify that the JSON file and the submitted verified credential uh, is, uh, is not a fake, it's true. So in this first step, I download uh, this JSON file uh, to my folder. Uh, and the next step, I ask the verification link, ask for verification that this is, uh, uh, can be verified. So I choose the file. I just as I download it in my hiring folder, I open it and I call the verification service of Diplomi. And as you can see, uh, here is the, uh, the um, that's what uh, Roberto has given in this uh, uh, diploma. I can verify it on the Etsy ledger, so everything is green. So I can trust that that's what uh, Ahmed Mutawala Ahmed sends to me uh, it has been verified, has really come uh, from the University of Cagliari and so on. And so I'm happy that I have someone who I can invite. Uh, for a personal interview, and I hope that uh, he will, we both of us will be um, good partners in our uh, company. Uh, and finally, I can show you uh, that that what we showed to you is not a fake. So I can show you that all these bits uh, we use are really part of the um, trusted issue registry. For example, here in this uh, some. Um, Someone of you know this can check it. So this is in the trusted issue registry, uh, and also what I can uh, check is uh, whether sorry um, whether the um, here whether the user did is also in the did registry. I copy and paste it here in this uh, did registry, and you can see all this is not fake. So it's all everything. Uh, anchored in the EPSI uh, infrastructure. So this was my part, and now I give the uh, floor again to Leticia. Thank you very much. So I will be very brief because we have just three minutes left. We are glad to show you uh, the more help you enjoy. 
As a roadmap, as you can see, this is a, uh, let's say, um, real scenario. So the app is already developed. It's also uh, compliant with other languages like um, German or Italian. Uh, also, we would like to full deployment the QPR infrastructure on the EPSI production infrastructure. And uh, what is also important and we consider relevant is enlarge the involvement of other stakeholders like enigmatic centers and other universities. So, um, as key challenges, uh, uh, we uh, are keen on interoperability of system, compatibility of uh, infrastructure, and also reliability and authenticity of sharing information um, and data. Uh, so, our call to action, that is also our commitment to the EPS infrastructure, is that we have one user, a unique wallet and multiple services for digital academic mobility. We are here to work with everyone who is interested to join um, EPS infrastructure and uh, let's say that's all from our side. So thank you very much.